Bob, this is your tenth year of Scrappy. Yeah, that's right, Lisa. Yeah. And how do you feel you've changed over the past decade? Well, at least time teaches you a few lessons and also leaves a few scars. You know, as a man grows older, I also think he grows a little wiser. You know, I think, Lise, I have finally grown up. Welcome to a very special episode of Scrap Heap Challenge, celebrating a decade of ingenious bodging, which has seen teams from across the land displaying the mechanical Midas touch, using nothing but scrap. In our very first episode, we asked two teams to build hovercraft. The results were pitiful at best. Only one team made it round, and they had to be pushed the whole way. To celebrate, our 10th birthday, we've decided to recreate that inaugural challenge. But this time round, our teams will have to cross land and water whilst carrying all three team members. Hovercraft are notoriously difficult to get right, so we've gathered the cream of the contestants from the last decade to take on this most difficult of challenges. Let's hope that a decade on, we have a little bit more success. Our first team represents the intellectual side of the scrap heap. These boys have so many letters after their names they could be confused with a Welsh village. Leading the team is scrap heap veteran and polymath Richard Gibbon, OBE, or Gibbo. On the scavenge is Royal Engineer and all-round egghead Richard Little, B Eng. Completing this high Q hit list is Brainbox and Master Boat Builder Toby Kilner. Moving to the top of the class, it's the Bright Sparks. They'll be up against the more instinctive school of engineering. It's a long walk from the West Country and they scrape their knuckles all the way here. Captain of these give it a bash bodgers is past scrappy captain and expert Richard Vincent, or Turbo. He's ably assisted by boat builder Will Trickett, along with farmer and scrappy favourite son, Andy Barnes. At the back of the bus, it's the grunts. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, teams. Now, you have been chosen for your brawn and brains because we have a very special challenge for you today. Your considerable task is to fabricate craft capable of terraqueous perambulation. What well, well, that, 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 <laughs> that means build an hovercraft. Oh, oh, right. Right. Oh, oh, right. oh, yes, teams. You have just... 10 hours to make your air cushioned inventions both land and seaworthy. Slide off at the sound of the gong. Wait for it, guys, wait for it. Oh, Don't wait, mate! <laughs> when building a hovercraft, our teams will have to bear three things in mind power to help them up and along, lightweight materials to keep their weight down. And most importantly, some sort of skirt to hold an air cushion. <laughs> Hovercraft. What well, about that then, boys, eh? <laughs> Go on, Captain, what do you know? Right, so <laughs> we're going to have some sort of base. Yep. Which has got to float off the ground. Engine in the middle. And another one at the back. Which is the back? But how are we going to get it off the ground? Big engine. V8. Fan. <laughs> Well, our teams seem more or less clued up, which is just as well, because this week there are no experts to help them. Confession time, Toby. Come on. Oh, I'm 17 and a half stone, which is I'm 107 like kilos. 100, <laughs> I'm around the 16, but about 100 kilos. By the time we stick an engine and fan, we're looking at 500 kilograms. Yes, we quite are. a bit. We're happy to go with a single engine and yes. get away from the twin engine, because obviously we're then we're possibly reducing weight as well. So wooden construction, if we can find enough wood okay. out there, would be ideal. And we want some sort of a skirt. Lots of little skirts. Lots of little skirts. The Bright Sparks are doing it by the book. They're planning a classic hovercraft. Oh. A lightweight hull will support a single engine, providing both upward lift and forward thrust. 
Air will be channeled down to a segmented skirt made up of lots of bags sewn together. It's great in theory, but they're relying on finding light materials and a small but powerful engine. If their engine is too small, all the Bright Sparks theories will be academic. We're going to have to do a lot of sewing if we're going to have to make these bags. Yes. So we're looking at 96. You're going to be sewing for quite some time. <laughs> the Grunt's plan involves less brain work and more bodging. We'll bang our engine in here. Yeah. We a girt fan on the bottom one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on the outside, we will put our cushions on the back here somewhere. Right. Driving another girt fan. So what we saying? That's going to be the motorbike engine on the back there, then, Andy? Is it? Well, you want a bit more power, Nick. Way, want us? Yeah. yeah. It's going to have plenty of revs, wouldn't it? Yeah, plenty of revs. Quite pokey. The grunts are going for a boat-shaped hull. But instead of segments, a single bag skirt will provide a cushion. They're using one engine for lift and another for directional thrust. It's a simple approach and should make for an easy build. But two engines means there's twice as much to go wrong. So all we got to do is blow down here, pull up the skirt, rev the nuts off of it, one and off us go. Yeah. <laughs> But before our brainiacs and boneheads can get building, they need a list of scrap to scavenge. What can we use for a boaty-shaped thing? High-top van roof? What size of car? 1.2, somewhere around, around there. We'll go for a lawnmower. Wood. Some fans. Fans. Fan. Skirt material. Anything that they might want. Yeah, absolutely. Off you go, boys. Come on, Ed, Good luck. Let's go on, then. <laughs> And the brilliant sparks conjure up air cushion splendor from the inconsequential cast off located hereabouts. Or can the grunts uh, do them? <laughs> Find out after the break. Welcome back to Scrap Heap Challenge, where to celebrate our 10th year, we're recreating our very first challenge by asking our teams to harvest a hovercraft from our fields of flotsam. That shouldn't be hard, it's a lot less bother with a hover. In theory. <laughs> Ten years ago, building hovercraft proved a step too far for our teams. Let's hope our hand-picked scrap heap veterans can do better this time around. And it's first blood to the bright sparks. It does turn. I'll have a belt on it as well. Richard has made a discovery. Geriatric, this is Junior. Hello, Geriatric. Over. Zimmer receiving. We have a 16 horsepower lawnmower rotary engine. It's not enough power for what we ultimately want, but let's have it for now, over. Ha <laughs> ha, good This'll be all right. Wahey! That sounds interesting. Ha 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 Pirateering! Oh, hold on, hold on. I've just seen the opposition and they've got a car. But cunning Richard thinks he knows what the opposition want. Now, we might be able to do a bit of a trade on this. See if you can head them off at the pass. But we'll meet you there. OK. <laughs> hey, we got... <laughs> what? <Whoops. laughs> Which bit do we want? <laughs> it does there seem to be a little bit of trouble here. Yeah. No trouble yeah. at all. It's just that we found this lovely 16 horsepower lawnmower engine. Yeah. And, I, and you've got a car, and I think that might do our build a little bit better, and the lawnmower might help oh, you out. You I think we should just get on with it a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just see what happens, because there's other things that they might get of ours, and yeah, then we'll be in a pit yeah, and strong right, as yeah, ever. Yeah, <laughs> Round one to the grunts. The racy car engine has been claimed. <laughs> And the bright sparks have to make do with a 16 horsepower wooden spoon. Hello. Bright sparks. Welcome back to the heap. Uh, uh, very kind. So, talk me through your design. How are you going to make your hovercraft? We're aiming to have a single engine. It's going to be quite a powerful engine to, to do the thrust and the lift. I did see a little contretemps going on outside their build area. What was that all about? Well, we, we were hoping they'd use old beaten up lawnmowers. Is that ideal for what you want? Um, not for the design that we've gone with, so the car will be the better one. So we're just finding a few more things they might want and then possibly do a bit of bartering later. You're not normally out here on the heap, are you? You're normally in the build areas as an expert or a captain. Yes. It's pretty stressful, I can tell you. Is it? And I have a feeling the other boys are much better than we are. Yeah, well, Toby may well be right. This is not a team of hands-on grease monkeys. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, let's grab that tarpaulin. Yeah. She might be able to use the skirt on that. That is a very good idea. <laughs> For Richard and Toby, there are opportunities everywhere. There's enough truck campers here to make skirts for their hovercraft. This is useless, this one. Ribs in it. Taking it. Yeah. And there may be enough left over to trade for an engine. And they need to get moving because their right opponents, there, okay. the grunts, have stepped up a gear. Check it, what are we going to look for? A propeller? What's if it propeller? looks like it's good for hovercraft, I think we'll have it. What about this for a hull then, Trick it? They think this fiberglass van roof could make an excellent lightweight hull, saving hours of fabrication. Hey, Turbo, I say, old chap, we seem to have found a rather spiffing boat down here. This is all high top, just like we were hoping for. Sounds like a good idea to me, Tricky. They may not have an O level between them, but when it comes to construction, the grunts are swats of the highest order. All right, Andy. I can't immediately see the connection between a sort of three-ton van and a hovercraft. I mean, well, what, we what? sort of got this idea we might beat the top off on. Why, is your base that you build the hovercraft on? Well, we were sort of thinking that might work. That's, that's but you've done some top scavenging this morning. I mean, well, you've got the best engine on the side. <laughs> <laughs> have you got enough to get going with then? Because you've got so much stuff now. Not you, really, no. Really, what we else, need, what well, else we need that for? for a start. Right, you just want the top, think, don't you? You don't want the rest of it. No, we just all yeah. need quicker back the yard, but we're probably going to have to do it here. Yeah. And even though you've more or less scavenged the entire heap dry, <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you carry on. Yeah. Isn't it nice to be one up for once Isn't on them boys? Just, yeah. 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 As that lightweight roof comes off, it looks a lot heavier than before. Well, that's torn it. Their brainy opponents have spotted an opportunity, and a deal could well be on the cards. I tell you what, if we give these boys a hand moving this fan back, I think we might be able to take this off them. Yeah? How does yeah, that sound? I reckon that sounds good to me. So you reckon that's all right then? Uh, yeah, did I hear a cry for help then? Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> so you boys having fun? Tell me, feel rather at home, wasn't it? But don't for a moment think the bright sparks are acting out of kindness. They've merely let their opponents do the grunt work. Thank you, Toby. Cheers, yeah, boys. Now. Thank you, Rich. That's OK. I love it when a plan comes together. Not only do they get the engine, but that van's walls are packed with wooden panels. They're not called the Bright Sparks for nothing. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Turbo. How you doing? All right, you come, come to pick your car, car up. Oh, yeah. It only remains for Gibbo to pick up the motor. Richard, you are now the proud owner of a Peugeot 205. Good man. The Briggs and Stratton's yours. We'll come round and get it in a minute. You do. Happy motoring. But why is Turbo smirking? Flat out in reverse. Come on, give it some style. Turbo, he couldn't. Now he wouldn't, surely. Would he? Come on, Richard, show us what you're made of. Come on, let's go. Yeah! <laughs> come on, Richard, let's have it then. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> so, with our boneheads and our brain boxes both scavenging away, it's time to meet the man who puts the craft into hovercraft. This man has worked with hovercraft since he was a boy. He's the founder of the Hovercraft Museum and secretary of the Hovercraft Society. For five years, he taught people how to fly them. Frankly, if anyone else knew more about hovercraft than he does, we'd have got them instead. He's Warwick Jacobs. Hello. Hello, Warwick. Very Thank nice you. of you to join us today, because I think we really need as much help as we can get on this How one. it works. How do hovercrafts work? Well, it's not rocket science. This is a hover hockey table. Right. If we put some air on, right. as we've got here now, this puck starts floating oh, wow. with a cushion yeah. of air. So it removes all the friction that it was having before. It's totally. Just... And if you increase the surface area that's getting air, we can carry a load as well. A hovercraft works by pumping air under its own hull into a space called the plenum chamber, where it forms a high-pressure air cushion. This air cushion lifts the craft away from the ground, reducing friction, which allows the hovercraft to glide easily over even surfaces, such as water or grass. A rubber skirt keeps the air in place and stops the cushion deflating too quickly. 
while the incoming air acts as a secondary seal. There is a difference between the, the airbags that the, the teams are, are thinking of, yes. of building. Yes, grunts is very basic. It's just a, a, a rubber okay. surround and just blowing the air under the hovercraft and using another prop to push it along. Right, so they'll have two engines and two separate the props. simplest approach, really. Right. But the bright sparks, sparks yeah. have really tackled it well. They're, they're ducting the air all around the craft through fingers and uh, that should hold the surface, contour the ground. They're sharing the air for the lift sharing it for the thrust and I think about two-thirds of it's going to go out the back to push right. themselves along and hopefully that third is going to be enough to carry them. If you were going to start using one of these hovercraft commercially, which one would you choose at the moment? At the moment, I think I'm going to go for the Bright Sparks. Right. So the Bright Sparks have our judges' vote. That's fine. Excellent. They now have a large enough engine, but Richard and Toby have hit a small snag. There's a couple of fans, but they're going to be no use to us whatsoever. As much use as a chocolate teapot. But with Gibbo's meticulous planning, there shouldn't be a problem. My God, it's twice as big as I thought it was going to be. Oh, wow! Now, you know, Gibbo, I've brought in some odd things for teams over the years. So this is the first time in 10 years I've ever brought in a sewing machine. But I imagine Ray, this is going to be quite that. useful, isn't it? We've got 90 bags to make and there's a lot of sewing in each bag. But what do the bags do? That, that's the, the bags form this sort of skirt around the edge. Right. So they've got to be sewn a from huge top all in. Sewing. Yes. Have you, have Richard's you ever driven a hovercraft. He's driven one, right. I've looked at postcards of hovercraft <laughs> and that's about it. I don't think Toby's had a lot to do Toby with hovercraft. Toby just doesn't do that no. sort of thing. But he's very good at wood, so yes. no, he's no, going to he make the happy with all the wood. Luckily, there's plenty of wood. But Toby's carpentry skills will be sorely tested because it's going to be a big job. And their opponents are not messing around. Andy, have a look at that. Well, you're a fan there as well. Turbo, we found a couple of fans. Sod on, we'll be in in a moment. These fans from an industrial aircon unit have seen better days, but they'll make excellent propellers. And two minutes later, Trickett scores his hat trick. Easy! Drive belt, extra shaft, the works. Good boy, Trickett. His teammate Andy has gone one better. Oh, what a piece. This old motorbike engine will have enough horsepower to hoik the grunts well into the lead. Ahead in the hunt for bits, the grunts can work on their layout. It's, we want to maybe get it right up here. Is that silly to put up here? So what we're going to do is put the fan in the front. We'll put a good sheet of polystyrene in there. Yep. I've seen a block of that out in the yard. Which yeah. Is way. <laughs> right, that's the decision then, is it? And if we get the grunts have now completed their scavenge, right. with one notable exception. We need some heavy canvas type stuff. I'm you want a bit of skirt, after a bit of skirt. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. A bright sparks and grunts. And this is your seven hour call. Seven hours, teams. That's all. Seven hours. Bright spark Gibbo is stripping his team's engine, but not quickly enough for Richard. You're not got the engine out yet. It's something he knows all about, in theory. I've just cut everything. I've You've cut? No. First rule of disconnection never cut anything. But with the added pressure of time, Richard has to forget about the rules and get on with his own work. I'm just going to work out a template for these bags, OK? Richard plans for the airbags could all be hot air. Because the grunts have all the propellers. And out on the scavenge, Trickett has sniffed out a large source of tarpaulin. In the last place, the grunts should be looking. You know what they got in their shed? What's that? They've got a massive pile of canvas. A plan is forming. It's got to be a fair swap, isn't it? To get enough canvas for their skirts, the grunts will have to offer the one thing they know the opposition haven't got. Ah! There you go. That's what you boys need. So we want all of that lot. Yep. And we want that lump of aluminium that I know you've got. Cue some hard uh, bargaining, yeah. West Country style. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, 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 yes. no, no, yes. <laughs> And a deal is reached. Cheers, guys. You have a nice day now. Hope you lose. Well, our team seem to have hoovered up all they need for their hovercraft. So much for the scavenge. But what about the build? Will it glide along effortlessly on a cushion of air? 
Or will it be more like one of these? We'll find out after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Scrap Heap Challenge, where our two teams, the Grunts and the Bright Sparks, are building hovercraft that can race on land and water. And they've got just ten hours to get them finished. If they fail, it'll be soggy bottoms all round. And as ever, all they've got to make them from is, is scrap. Hold on, I'm going to trace him around with this. That's it. It's either a, a, a pure genius or an absolute madman that can draw a perfect circle. <laughs> Most likely ain't coming in too bad. Yeah. Next door, they're certainly genius at work. Or is it all chalk and talk? That's, that's the, 500. So that's the 30 degrees. That's 300. Yep. Richard has made up a template for the hovercraft skirt. Right. Two to one. In a hovercraft, air entering the skirt is directed down and inward to provide lift. Richard has designed several bags that will sit next to each other, like segments in an orange. Holes cut in the bags will spread the air evenly throughout the skirt. So there's less chance of it leaking out all at once over bumpy terrain. It's a proven theory and should keep the bright sparks afloat on test day. <laughs> but 96 bags means a lot of sewing and Richard has got his work cut out. If only my old needlework teacher could see me now. Fortunately, the modern army prepares its men for every eventuality. Ooh. Senior! Perfect. Air comes in, down, round, and blows out through. Billows the out there. Top in there. 94 to go. Have you finished yet? About another 10 minutes. <laughs> Now, we're about halfway through their allocated mm. 10 hours at the moment, Warwick. They are now finally both working very hard, I think. The skirts are going to win this or right. lose it. Right. Have you got a sort of preferred skirt design? Yeah, I mean, the grunts have gone for a simple bag, simple as that. And it's going to be a bit like a, a blancmange, really, when it inflates up. Whereas the bright sparks have thought about each segment, oh, which yeah. are each directing the air through a hole down into the skirt and under the hull. Right. So, now, from the t point of view of propulsion, have the bright sparks got enough power and fan size to do the two jobs. Well, it's the tip that does all the work. Right. So if they can get the tips nicely into the duct with a nice bit of clearance, it'll get maximum thrust they can right. and the maximum lift because a third of it is doing the work for yeah. lifting it. But in terms of your 50p, last time I spoke to you it was Bright Sparks. Bright Sparks for their hovercraft, yeah. yes. Yeah, oh, it still is, you're still sticking I, with I, them. If, if you let me drive it, I'll take that one. <laughs> Judge Warwick prefers the Bright Sparks design, but at the moment, that's all it is. Their opponents, the Grunts, are getting on with their build. I'll get in there because I bant terribly heavy, be I? No, you'll be on your little. Andy cuts a hole in the van's roof to give the lifting fan an air duct. Here we are. Turbo has welded a mount for the front engine to sit on and is now turning his attention to the second engine, giving the grunts their thrust. Here we go, Trigger. This is what we can do then, isn't it? Well, if we have one of those flanges on there, short bit of shaft... And that'll get us eight inches away from there. Yeah. Perfect. Afternoon, Turbo. Hello, Robert. Oh, this looks like... This looks like a ship. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm presuming some sort of fan goes in there. Well, we're going to put a, one engine with a fan on in there, yeah. which will fill our airbag up. Right. We've got the other engine there, which is a motorbike engine. Yeah. Which is going to drive our propulsion right. forward. Right. We are pretty much on the way. We know where we're going now. Right. But how will the air get all... Are you going to sort of feed it? Because they sort no, of feed it. No, it'll feed it. itself, it'll feed right. itself, will it? No, it'll feed itself, Ren, right. because it's fixed on the top and fixed on the bottom, so it'll completely fill up like a sausage. Forcing air into Turbo's sealed sausage means it won't be a hovercraft, but a dinghy. However, cutting holes at the rear of the sausage will allow air into the space beneath the hull. The build-up of pressure will create an air cushion, turning the dinghy into a hovercraft. This should allow the grunts to float away gently, even with turbo on board. Oh. The other problem I suppose you've got, vaguely, is time. Time is a little bit up against us at the yeah. moment, I must say. 
Yeah. But um, being farmers like we are, we well. can leave the harvest to the last moment. That's right. And it's probably normally raining when we when we do that. So. For the bright sparks, time's a bigger issue. Richard has started his sewing marathon, but is already getting distracted. Senior! Come on, then, what do you want me to do? Let's stop the yapping, let's get on with the job. Toby's wooden hull is ready for its outriggers, which will hold the skirts and contain the air cushion. You just need to be a half an inch taller, don't you, on that one? Oh. Attains your attention, please. You have four hours remaining today. Four oh. hours. Oh. 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 Thank you. That's OK. <laughs> You're having a giraffe. With the clock ticking, Richard is speed welding the sprocket for his engine. But it's a job that can't be rushed. OK, stop there. And now it needs okay. correcting. It looks like trying a shortcut has backfired, and Gibbo's not happy. Okay. Don't take it off again. I've got to, mate. There's nothing I can do about it. It's got to be perfect. For the grunts, doing things by eye is second nature. Well, 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 that's enough. Turbo is welding a mount for the rear engine. Yeah, that's good enough. That's good enough. And Trickett is making his version of a hovercraft skirt. And now it's time to put their efforts to the test. <laughs> that, that, that pull out, that be all right. He might run. Hello, well, Grunt. Hello. Oh, hello, Lisa. Oh, my lover, how are we getting on? I'm fine. How are you getting on, more to the point? Oh, we're getting on all right. So you've got your first engine here, blowing downwards. It's going to fill the skirt up to give you yeah. some lift. Are you happy you've got this fan going the right we way? Think the we think we know. Yeah, I put it in. So we were about to try it in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> right, I'm going to I'm going to move crossed. away. I'm going to cross everything. Yeah, I reckon you should give him for them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we are. It's got too much oil in it. That was. It rev a lot harder than that. I wonder. Yeah. It rev twice as much as that. Anyway, it turns sorry, over. Now you're all very laid back, like it's all fine, but I know. So come on, let's be realistic. What have we got left to do? We got to get the back engine mounted and running, and we've just got to finish up off the skirts. Okay. Turbo and Andy get on with it the only way they know how. What's that between my hands? Two oh, foot. That's two foot. <laughs> have you been calibrated recently? <laughs> yeah. Something the bright sparks just can't okay. seem to get the hang of. No, she's broken again. Oh dear, it's a pain this, isn't it? As the bright sparks' giant brains go into meltdown, let's take a closer look at what they're trying to build. The hovercraft was invented in 1956 by Christopher Cockerell, and early models had solid hulls. But a skirted version crossed the English Channel in 1959 and paved the way for an industry. The Model T of the hovercraft world was the SRN6. This workhorse found success worldwide with coast guards, passenger services and even the military. Hold there. Another okay. military museum piece, Richard Little, has finally knuckled down to his sewing session. Toby has been building his precision hull all day, but now his razor-sharp brain is flagging. Um, um, and Gibbo has no sympathy. You're in the brainy team. You're in the brainy team. Oh, dear. We seem to have confused clever with posh. Right. Have you got your radius? No. What's come on. 11.96. Oh, come on. Teams! Teams! You've only got two hours remaining! Two? Oh, two hours! <laughs> That's all! <laughs> Will you shoot him or shall I? It's a wake-up call for the bright sparks. They need to get their fingers out. Hey! 94? Well, brilliant. Done. What a hero. Can I have a coffee now? Oh, 
the bright spark for it. What a team. Yeah. They've done nothing but argue all day. Add 598 to 598. You can oh, surely can't do, do that. that. I'll do it come on, this. on, and it should come. No, come on. I, I was really shocked to find out they still haven't got their engine mounted, which they were talking about hours ago that yeah. they were it's about to It's a textbook hovercraft, though. I mean, they've it is. They've got all. They've the now skirt's got. All made, isn't the it? skirt's all made, isn't yeah. it? They've just got to attach it. Yeah. yeah. It's which sounds complicated to me. If there's 96 separate bags, that means 96 separate fixings, yeah. which is quite a lot yeah. to do. But, uh, you know, in contrast, the grunts, do you think their skirt's going to work? It might work on land. It might not work on water. Ah, really? you know, they're, they're different vessels when you yeah. change surfaces. Um, so that's going to be interesting. Yeah. Is your opinion changed at all on which one you, is your favourite now? We've got two peculiar hovercraft, one yeah. textbook and one comic book. You've been sticking with the bright yeah. spots all day pretty consistently. Yeah, uh, if they can finish it and get it all done, they've got probably the best chance. But on getting a craft finished, it could be the grunts. Go with the grunts now, Joel. I'll Give go with the grunts. Break, just for this time. So our judge thinks the grunts' comic book effort might be in with a chance. Having cracked on with their build, they can now afford to rethink their baggy skirt design. If we move, take this off and just move the thing up a fraction, we'll have more room in the middle for our air cushion. Tell you what, if it's going to take ten minutes, let's not talk about it for five. Yeah, let's do it in ten of them. Do it. Raising the skirts by six inches will cost them time, but if Turbo thinks he's up against it, it's nothing compared to his opponents. Richard's getting his bags attached to his team's hovercraft, but the pressure is starting to tell on Captain Gibbo. Richard, calm down. Take yeah, a step back, Richard. Everything mate. Take a step I back. do, you say, if I were you, I wouldn't do it that way. Yeah, well, I, okay, I'm looking at it a more practical way of doing things. Teams, teams, I really can't believe it. I can't believe you've only got one hour remaining. One hour's build time. That's all there is. I can't believe it myself. I can't understand what a panic's about. With an hour to go, both teams are working in earnest. Oh, at least the grunts. I think they misread the whole notion of skirts. No, it's not a skirt. That's no. a full-length ball gown. It is, isn't it? Well, I tell you what, this is getting to look like a proper job now, isn't it? And Turbo's managed to get some big, heavy welding in on their engine at the back, because, you know, they, they just haven't had enough welding to do, poor fellas. Come on, Barnes, you bring her on. I, th I think it's probably fair to say that the grunts have had a more pleasurable experience. Yes. Next door at the Bright Sparks, we're talking haute couture on their oh, skirts. To make that looks incredible. OK, lower it down a little bit. The engine's on, they're happy it works. Uh, and, and very importantly, they've got to put the cowling on the back so it you know, directs the, the, uh, yeah, the down, air down mate. so it yeah. actually inflates the skirts. Right. So I mean, they still have got a lot to do. I think it's going to be absolutely the wire. And have they stopped arguing? Because I know Toby had you know, probably lost his mind earlier on. Oh. Probably before we got here, though, to be fair. Yes. Oh, no! The grunts add the finishing touches to their rear engine. So that's one, Just... two, three. And with the build all bodged up, they can sit back. <laughs> oh, my. And relax. This got to be an end, another HMS proper job, this have, not it, really? That puts all the pressure on the bright sparks. Richard fashions a steering wheel from an old set of handlebars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With moments to go, the bright sparks slide their engine cowling into position. Put it central, put it central, just put it central. Sorry, right, don't worry about that. As the final seconds tick away, Toby fits the dividing duct onto the back. There are still rudders to go on, but they simply haven't got the time. OK, teams, raise your skirts and step away from the build. Your time is up. Yes! Yes, yes teams, yes. tomorrow we find out if your scrappy skimmers are up to scratch. We'll be testing them on our Scrap Heat Challenge Hovering Obstacle Course. Well done, team. Congratulations. Well done. Captain. Woo. Good job. Caps. Hey, looks like hovercraft. Sure does. And we aren't really broke a sweat. Well, it was a bit warm. It's been a brain-teasing ten hours for our teams. But who'll be floating on air tomorrow, and who'll be left breathless? Will it be the Bright Sparks textbook hovercraft with the precision machining? Or will it be the Grunt's upside-down roof with a bag hanging off it? 
find out after the break. Welcome back to Scrap Heap Challenge, where two teams from opposite ends of the intellectual spectrum, the Bright Sparks and the Grunts, are busy preparing their hovercraft for a testing time. And it's a terraqueous challenge this week. Our teams will start on land and race across the lake in their hovercraft to the finish line on the far shore. There will be two runs each. The fastest combined time will win it. We're not exactly asking them to walk on water, but it will be a miracle if both teams finish the course. The teams are using every second of their tinker time. Tutored triumvirate, the bright sparks have trimmed the corners off their engine cowling and added rudders to direct their single fan. Tricky trio, the grunts, have copied their opponents with a hastily bodged up rudder system and added extra fan blades for more engine power. Now, Warwick, tinker time today has been mm. extremely busy. From the point of view of the grunts first. They've really paid attention to the skirt. They've nipped it in, pulled it underneath, so hopefully it'll get more air in and under, which, right. is, which is quite essential. I mean, the Bright Sparks machine, even the skirts look very impressive. Really. Superb skirt. Yeah. At the end of the day, really, it's going to be how they drive the two machines. If the Bright Sparks, they've got their skirts right, they stand a good chance. Do they? Right. Although their hovercraft are designed for three, in the interests of health and safety, both teams will carry just two team members on their first run. Bright Sparks, yes. how did you decide on the two men you were putting in? Ballast. It gives us a bit more trim, shall we say, around the boat. But look, guys, it's a beautifully made craft. Thank you. Let's hope it performs as well on the water as it looks good on land. Thank you. Bright Sparks, go on the sound of the horn! <laughs> Get their weight back. With a helping hand from Captain Gibbo, the bright sparks are soon afloat. They're going, they are going. If Toby's got to get the balance right. Come forward. Come forward. They're not more than they've climbed that bow yeah. way. With a few adjustments to balance and steering, the bright sparks settle into a rhythm. The bright sparks have wafted over the line in 3 minutes and 16 seconds. Like their opponents, the grunts are going to play it safe for their first try. Grunts, the moment of truth. Do you feel slightly unnerved by how that one went? Uh, well, well, we're just we're going to take it a little bit easy, you know. We've got a slightly dodgy motor on the back. Oh, so, really? And we've yeah. tweaked the yeah. whatever the expression is off of this one, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Yeah. Oh, Barnsley, so, you haven't uh, let Barnsley tweak your uh, engine. Yeah, we've got yeah, the governor. He's had to go with the little governor down there. Oh yeah. no! We'll be all right. Flat out is the yeah. order of the day. That is really a surprise. That's almost ever its bow way. Yeah. The grunt's over revving engine is keeping them afloat. Or is it? I think that's the front that's engine. That's the front engine. That's that's Barnsley tinkering. <laughs> oh no. Should be there. There's a lot of smoke. Oh that's my goodness. If Andy's engine blows now, the grunts are in for an early bath. Well, I love the fact that Barnes isn't the slightest bit concerned. No. Having right over what effectively is a burning engine. With their pistons begging for mercy, Trickett and Andy limp over the finish line. Yeah, there we A time of 3 minutes and 56 seconds puts them 38 seconds behind their opponents. For their second and final run, the Bright Sparks are putting all their eggheads in one basket. Bright Sparks, go on the sound of the horn. Three, two, one. Oh, 
That's a better entrance, though. Oh, oh they've jumped on! Well done. Hey, you're kidding. That is going better, I swear. But with three men on board, the craft is floundering badly. Richard is wrestling with the controls just to keep them on course. And they've, they've lost their steering lost now. Their steering. They're tearing, turning round. It's a disaster. The steering cable has snapped and the bright sparks are out of control. I think they're doing the best thing, keep it going. Perhaps they're doing a synchronised ballet now for yeah. us. Toby manoeuvres the rudder by hand, while Gibbo tries to counterbalance him. It's a great crossing, but that dying swan impression slowed them down. The bright sparks have a combined time of 5 minutes and 18 seconds. It's the grunt's final attempt. To win, they'll really have to rag it, but that engine is already under incredible strain. You ready? It's no bother! Get on your hover! Go on the side of my heart! I don't quite know who's in there. It looks like Turbo running alongside. He's jumped in. <laughs> oh, dear. Not quite such an impressive entry into the lake as last time, I think it's fair to say. I think the front um, is too far down. I, I think, think they I need, think got, they I think need they to go back a little bit. Turbo is providing solid ballast. Now we've got yes, some air coming out the front. Yeah. Yes, and it is going faster, isn't yeah. it? And it looks like the extra weight has actually worked in their favour. And they're rounding the corner, they're heading towards the finish line. The engine is packing up, but they're so close it hardly matters. I've no idea who's won. I've got not a clue. What a way to celebrate ten years of Scrappy! But who'll come out on top? Well, teams, earlier on I said it would be a miracle if both teams completed the course. Well, you have proved that miracles do, in fact, happen. There was just one minute sixteen between the total times for the four runs. The winners are, in fact, the Grunts! Oh! Yeah! 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 Yeah!